people, welcome to Rebirth of the Call, Volume 1, dedicated 110% to my legacy. Part of my legacy is simply, a long time ago, I identified that dance, freestyle dancing, doing jazz dancing, gave me a whole host of benefits. That's the first thing. <clears throat> and I started to document them, and I started to gather research. I, I identified to people that proactive with that UK jazz dance, what it did for me was basically, it kept me positive it kept me optimistic, it kept me hopeful, it kept me happy, it kept me alert, it kept me focused, it gave me self-determination, resilience, it gave me creative skills, gave me artistic skills. I identified all these things and then I became an advocate of identifying these key things through doing projects and then furthermore what I went on to do, I researched, did research into uh, could I evidence the benefits? And I found a, a lot of work by a gentleman called Dr. Levat. I found a lot of work in early learning. They talk about early learning dance, early learning art, <coughs> early learning drama, what that does for a child. Do you understand? It benefits them, gives them life skills, it gives them um, social, physical, intellectual, cultural, emotional development skills, etc. I was one of the first to really identify that from a young age, and I, I did essential journeys, essential journals around that. Uh, and what happens to individual, I'm still advocating that today as individual, backed up by research today by dance psychologist and expert Dr. Levat, who is one of my champions because Dr. Levat is a dyslexic, is a person with dyslexia who went on to become a, he was a dancer, who went on to become a dance psychologist of his career, and I'm very much into sustainable dance careers. So I, I'm an individual start to start to look, talking to case studies around dancers becoming sustainable dancers or coming sustainable leaders in their industry. Dr. Levat is one. Hilary Carter is one. She's head of CLAW Leadership Program. And what happened was, you have to know about dance. One thing about dance, from the beginning, is when you start to engage in dance, it engages you in leadership. Because what happens is, I went on to be a dance teacher, a dance coach, a dance mentor, a dance choreographer, <coughs> a dance educator, a dancing education educator, a dancing theatre, a dancing the commercial industries, all of these are leadership roles, do you understand? They involve team building, they involve teamwork, working with people. And basically dance is very much an empowering subject, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm an individual who empowers people using holistic ways. So <clears throat> this, my project, Rebirth of Call, identifies some of these, some of these are my key legacies. The other legacy is my longevity to evidence that, that dance had benefits. Because dancers were, and dancers have benefits to communities because what had happened basically in the UK dancers were treated like eighth class citizens people were immature people are airheads they weren't airheads the dancers <coughs> give a lot of commitment to the art and it was not recognized so one of the key things you talk about dancers what are the key things it takes to be a dancer you need emotional intelligence you need courage you need a plan you need scientific knowledge to be a dancer professional dancer which I am I self train myself to be a professional dancer and then I got some training later on. You need to be passionate. You need to give 110% to <clears throat> looking after yourself. You need self-care. You need self-love. Because one injury can destroy your career for life. So when people talk about dancers being immature, that's not the case. Every time you go into a dance studio to do class, you could destroy your career. Do you know what I'm saying? But you don't. Many people have gone into class and what they do, they do scientific work to enrich their bodies to make sure that they support their body. They look into health and safety, they look into all sorts of issues around dance. And I was one of the dancers that identified what had happened. We, the dancers treated as A-class citizens and that was unacceptable to me. As I mean, that's one key thing. Secondly, it was unacceptable to me as a dancer who self-trained himself in his cultural dancing that included different dance styles for other people to claim that formal dancing gave me the discipline, gave me the understanding of how to engage in dancing. It never happened that way around. It happened from my underground jazz dancing, gave me the aptitude, the abilities, and sports, and arts, and complementary arts, gave me the understanding, the discipline that was needed, the self-will, the self-determination to do ballet, to do contemporary successfully, surpassing people who had been dancing longer than me. Sports gave me a better... Sports... Excellence gave me a better understanding of how to engage in dance than dance excellence gave me a better understanding to engage in sports. You understand? You have to really understand what I'm saying here at the moment. Because usually people say that ballet is the one that gives you discipline. You don't only get discipline from ballet, you get discipline from martial arts. You get discipline from 
sports and you get technique. People talk about ballet technique. Ballet gives you superb technique in line, etc. You don't only get line from ballet, you get it from martial arts, you get it from other sports as well. So it's important for people to understand that. And the similar training, if you do sports excellence and dance excellence, you'll find they have similar things. And one of the similar things is about leadership. One of the similar things is professionalism. One of the similar things is commitment. One of the similar things <coughs> is passion. For you to be successful, you have to be passionate. One of the similar things is don't look before you leap. If you're going to sports, you have to look before you leap. You have to learn technical knowledge so you don't injure yourself in training. That's the same in sports. Do you understand what I'm saying in this room today? One, <coughs> look before you leap. You have to have a career. You seek coaches. You seek mentors. What you do, you try to minimise as many injuries as possible by seeking out books, seeking out coaches and mentors who can give you understanding of being in the dance world. And I did that. That's one of my legacies of leadership is I seeked out world-class professionals to hear their stories, to identify to them, I want to be sustainable in this industry. How can I do that? To identify having a portfolio career, make sure you diversify, engage in every type of dance form you can because that increases your opportunity for sustainable dance. And that's what I did. I took my social dance in UK jazz dance to ballet, to African, to ballroom, to tap, to flamenco, to tango. I've explored every type of art form. And what was really good for me as an individual was my um, cultural experimentation. I was open to looking at other art forms and discovered that other cultures weren't open to looking at my art form. They did the based UK jazz dance, uh, blue UK jazz dance or UK jazz dance in general and freestyle dance and that was unacceptable for me so that changed me to decide, look before you leap, what are you going to specialise in? I decided to specialise in my own style, blue UK jazz dance, which I identified gave me all these benefits, gave me understanding of how to engage in other dance forms from a different perspective but having an understanding that what happens is most dance forms around the world particularly jazz, a cultural, came from cultural, cross-cultural experimentation and from people being open. And what's happened over many years, dance became elitist. And what happened was people stopped being open. So a lot of young people now, they may do hip-hop, they don't look at other styles, not realising that their style is, came from cross-cultural experimentation. Tango came from cross-cultural experimentation. Flamenco came from cross-cultural experimentation. Jig did. Ballroom. They all came from cross-cultural experimentation and people don't have that understanding. Have you got that? Most importantly, I talk about how dance helped me to improve my health. I've been through health issues in my life, enabled me to maintain and improve my health and overcome serious issues of septus and blood poisoning and kept me mentally powerfully, mentally strong, kept me emotionally strong and kept me physically strong. Uh, as important and that what happened dancing involves you in mindfulness training the 